So in this video, I want to talk about the power of vulnerability and how attractive it can make you as a man, how it literally is the glue that holds everything together. But so many men get this wrong. They either just become needy or they push women away by becoming super reactive to it. So let's dive in a little bit deeper. Before I do, I want to invite you to check out The Art of Fearless Seduction. This book goes over all the embodiment principles that I talk about in these videos and that I reference all the time, from grounding to being vulnerable, to your heart connection, to being turned on, to proactive, reactive, and the sexy bastard meditation. So check out the book. There'll be a link somewhere in this video to learn more. Now, with that said, let's dive in. Vulnerability is one of the most attractive qualities in a man and why so many men get this wrong. You see, so many men have tried this out before, including myself. I had tried being vulnerable in the past. I had tried being vulnerable before I understood what vulnerability really was. And what I was really doing was being needy. And the more needy I was, the more I repelled women. It actually has the opposite effect. And this is why so many men are afraid to try vulnerability. You see, when you get vulnerable and you're strong and you're powerful in it, you own your vulnerability, it pulls women in. It causes women to get attracted to you like a magnet. But when you're needy and vulnerable, which is really just neediness, then what it does is it causes women to run the other direction. And I want to show you the difference in today's video. You see, when you get proactive with your vulnerability, not reactive to it, when you own it, that's what proactivity means. When I'm in vibrational time with the feeling, in the sense I'm not rushing through it, I'm not afraid of it. Yeah, it might be scary, but I'm not losing control to it. That's when you become the most attractive. For example, when you get really scared and you tell a woman, damn, you make me nervous. Look at you. Look what you're doing to me. That can be very attractive. But if I say to a woman, damn, you're, you're making me nervous. I, I, um, yeah, I hope, you know, hopefully you don't mind. It's very unattractive. It's two different ways of handling the same thing. Now, to illustrate this, I'm going to share a story that goes back to what I just said. I had a friend who was very good with women. And he went out one day and saw this woman at, uh, at a store, department store, that he thought was absolutely beautiful. And it was actually making him nervous. She was so beautiful. He's like, damn, look at her. I got to go talk to her. And so he walks up to do a direct approach. And as he gets close, he starts to get really nervous. He starts to feel it inside. And he starts to pull back a little bit. He starts to get more and more nervous. He starts to feel more and more vulnerable. He actually starts to shake. He gets this quiver in his lip. He walks over to her. And he says, hi, I just, you know, something about you. I had to come meet you. You're really attractive. And he was being kind of meek and pulled in. He was scared of saying what he really felt and being fully expressive. So there was a sense of being pulled back. And he was kind of looking at her, but looking down a little. And she was on her cell phone. She was typing something. And she goes, oh, thank you. And she's like, yeah, I appreciate it. And he caught what he was doing in that moment. Being that he was naturally good with women, he was a natural. He suddenly went in his head, what am I doing? And he stopped and he drops into his back, drops into his frame, looks at her, opens his heart more, feels his confidence and says, look at you. Oh my God, you're so beautiful. Look what you're doing to me. You're making me so nervous. And he started to own it. And we want to call this owning it. He owned his emotion and in a way where he, he, no matter what she says, he doesn't have to apologize for who he's being. She immediately felt the difference. Whereas before she was typing and saying, thank you, she suddenly takes her phone, puts it away, puts it in her bag, looks at him and goes, yeah. And they started talking. Now, they, went for, they continued to talk and flirted for a little bit. He got her phone number and uh, set up a date for later that week. And that's the power though. What's really important about this is that's the power of true vulnerability. It's this ability to connect at this deeper level. Yeah, you scare me and I don't give a fuck. I can face my own fear. I'm a man. You know what? That makes me nervous, but I'm going to walk right into it. This can also work with sad emotion. You can be really sad and really hurt. You're like, oh, I'm really nervous. I'm really sad. But you know what? I can handle it. I'm a man. I'm learning from that. And so to illustrate this point, I want to tell you another story about a client of mine, Eddie. Eddie was on a date with a woman at a sushi place. She had driven an hour to see him. And so he didn't want to cancel on her, but he was feeling really sad. And, and so there was something going on with his business that day. And he was in some heavy emotions. And he said, you know, I'm not going to cancel on her. She drove an hour to see me. So he sits down at the sushi place with her and he says to her, 
she says, how's your day going? And he goes, honestly, he's, he was just learning vulnerability for me, the principal, so he was gonna put it out there. And he goes, well, honestly, my day has been rough. It was, I'm really sad today. I had some really bad news in my business. And I actually thought about canceling, but I didn't want to cancel on you because you drove so far. And um, I'm glad I didn't because you're beautiful. And uh, it's all right, I can handle it. And she went, that is one of the sexiest things I've ever heard from a man on a first date. Come over and sit down next to me. So she, he got up, sat down next to her. She immediately put her hand on his leg and they started to connect. They started to have a conversation. That day even got better that night, according to him, and, and moved forward beautifully. It set the tone for the whole evening. You see, it's about being real. It's about being authentic and not being a victim to it, not being a victim to it. In other words, owning it. And when you can own your emotions, this can be powerful. This is also true with anger. You can get angry. You can call a woman out. And you can say, you know what, that really pisses me off. We need to talk about this. Let's have a real conversation about this right now. Because, you know, honestly, this really bothers me. You can also use anger. And anger is another really powerful one. Um, this one time I had a woman saying to me that she was going to come out and spend some time with me. She was going to travel out here to see me. And she was being kind of needy and insecure. And it was killing the attraction for me. And it wasn't who she normally is. I had already agreed to bring her out. She's like, well, are you sure you want me to go? Well, I'm, you know, I don't want to bother you. And it was, in a sense, it was making me feel like, like you don't need to give me an out because I have the balls to tell you if I don't want you to come. So stop doing this and stop looking for validation because I'm losing my respect for you. And so I basically said that to her. I said, look, you got to stop doing this. And she's like, what? I said, it really annoys me when you keep saying, do you sure you want me to come? Because I'm losing my respect for you. And honestly, I have the balls to tell you the truth. And if you don't believe I do, then maybe you shouldn't be coming out here in the first place. And she immediately said, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I won't do that anymore. And she stopped immediately, which then made me even more attracted to her because she got it. She got it right there. So I want to show you that that owning your emotions, owning your feelings is so damn powerful. Now, with that said, hopefully you're liking this video. I'm getting, there's some good information. And if you're really liking this video and it's really helping you to make sure to hit that like button, make sure to subscribe, make sure to share, make sure to comment in the video. Uh, we really love those comments. It helps us to grow the channel. So getting back to this point, I think you've got the point. It's a really simple point. Own your emotions. Don't be needy. Don't be, uh, uh, don't shy away from them. Don't pull back. And some examples of this would be that if you, uh, if you said, you know, you're really, you know, you're really beautiful and I just wanted to come over and tell you, there's a meekness to that. Now, if I walk over and I feel the same thing, I want to pull inside and I stretch myself open and I own it and I say, you know what, there's something about you. You are so damn beautiful. I just had to come over and meet you. And like, yeah, you know, I'm fucking shaking. You could be shaking, you don't even have to say it. But as long as you're owning it, she can see it. That's the power of real communication. I just wanted to show you that contrast from neediness to power. Now, uh, what I would love for you guys to do to really understand this principle at a deeper level is watch my video, uh, a video I've done in the past on proactive reactive and understand the difference between proactive and reactive because what I'm really demonstrating here is how to be proactive with your vulnerability. So by watching that video, it'll help you to take this understanding to a much deeper, deeper level. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And, uh, and as I said earlier, make sure to like, subscribe, share, and make sure to comment in the video. And with that said, remember, only the confident really live. I'll see you in the next video.